getting a bit twitchy now. Morning world. Welcome to, yeah, Wednesday, 2nd of August. And we're only that far away from harvest. But not when it's like this. I had a conversation with Reg, reference this year's harvest. We've got about 70 acres of feed wheat to get off. Um, and we're umming and ahhing on what we can and can't do. I mean, we're completely in the lap of the gods, at the mercy of the weather. Um, time will come when it has to come off. And it's just a case of then, do we have to dry it? How much do we have to dry it? the cost of drying it, the cost of getting it off the field, storing it, moving it, drying it, restoring it again. It's potentially a real, real headache, borderline nightmare. Anyway, that's something we've got to think about for the next couple of days or week or so. Today, what I've got to think about is this corner. Um, Nichols just rang me yesterday to say uh, they were bringing out our next order of fertilizer, which is only 10 bags, but I've got to have somewhere to put it. Um, I thought I was taking my dad to hospital this morning. It looks like now I'm not. It looks like someone else has volunteered to do that for me. So I've got to ring my neighbor in a minute and say, don't worry about coming this afternoon. I've got it sorted. Don't forget to tell me to ring Eddie. Um, but in the meantime, I think this is coming about three o'clock this afternoon, he said. Um, I need to move some of this, some of that, put some more pallets down and get ready for another 10 bags of fertilizer to come in here. So it is at least kind of almost job in the dry. Those two there, I think that is B. And that one is uh, 30 or so. That's the mineral stuff which is like to feed the soil. This stuff feeds the soil. That stuff feeds new roots. And that's probably what we're going to use next. So. That's got to come to the front.
I need to get a couple of bucketfuls of stone in there. Level that, because the floor is sloping away downhill. Never was a very level floor in here. So I need to get this a bit more level. I'll have those pallets and that one on standby. So I can fill up the back row first. Back row of pallets, one, two, three, four, can stay where they are. They're all settled in the ground, they're quite happy. So I could probably get two, four, six. I could probably get my 10 bags on that back row. And then I'll bring the front row of uh, pallets in. And these guys can go back in the right order for how I want to use them. Some this year, two, I've got two spares of, um, Fertios was it? The, uh, yeah, Fertios 5. I got two spare of that. That one hurt to have a little bit in uh, reserve. But yeah, if I get this done and leveled up and ready to go, well, then I am. I'm ready to go, and I. I use a bit of the good stuff. Part of the front yard's all right, but there's some lumps in it, so it's just easier for me to put that with the bucket quickly and minimal effort. never going to get away scot free with no shovel rook was I not in that corner anyway right shovel all I'm really thinking of is once the pallets are on here I don't want them tipping forward I want the material to stay if anything tipping backwards a little bit so so yeah that's why we're doing this There's no point me getting too fussy about it because I'm going to scuff this up a bit when I'm bringing the first bags in. I'll have to go over it again, so we'll get them in, we'll have a tidy up, put some pallets down, put that stuff in front. Job will be a good one. I'm happy now. So we've taken all the bags that we have in stock off. So there's th three different products. That's basically a 20% nitrogen. Uh, um, I forgot what it's called, Nutrigrass. This is the stuff we put on last year, Fertios, which is basically replacing some of our trace elements in the soil, so helping our soil out. That stuff there is basically a kickstart for uh, rooting for new grass. So when the maize comes off over there, if the weather's right, we're gonna break the surface down again, chuck that on, and then stick some grass seed in there. I still got to order the grass seed. Um, but yeah, so we've taken everything off of here because this is the stuff we're probably gonna use first. In saying that, we'll see what um, the weather does and everything. We might use the humus start. So this is 10 bags, six tons of humus start we're having in, which basically goes over the whole farm. And the humus starts job basically is to replace that, the nitrogen. Apparently this product will break down the organic material in the soil far better 
uh, making it more available to our grasses, our plants to take up. So we need less nitrogen with a processed man-made um, product and it's cheaper. So it's like 300 quid a bag instead of 700 quid a bag or whatever that was. It was a lot. So, okay, so yeah, just leveled up at the back there. We'll put the Humistar on the back, the newest product at the back. Then we'll put some pallets at the front, those guys there, which are the same size as those guys there. So we'll put these guys in the front and then we know where we're doing. And yeah, there you go. So, and the battery's out of that. So I'm going for a cup of coffee. I started making it over an hour ago. I got as far as a cup of milk in the microwave, and that is as far as I got. Well, the idea was a good one. A few of you said, why don't you turn the pallet forks upside down and give yourself an extra couple of feet? I could do it, but it means I got to cut another slot out of there, because the top bar that goes in there is too wide for the slot there. Do I want to cut any more out of that? Mm. Yeah. Okay, a little bit more. There you go. You can go in the scrap. Okay, so now a bit more it's tight, but it goes in there. Right. Don't want it too slack in there, do we? That's one. That's two.
Okay. I honestly don't think that's going anywhere. So I'll tie up this bit of loose strap. They can't come off. They're being held by two pretty chunky castings on there. Um, so for this to pull off, bearing in mind them, you're going to use both. I'm not going to use just one. I'm going to spread the weight over both, although I would imagine, well, I don't know, with a loop on the bag. I'm pretty sure this is going to be okay. I'll tell you what I'll do. I should have my cup of coffee. We'll come in and do a couple of test lifts on one of these bags and just see, to see how it goes. But coffee first, priorities. Right, coffee is done. Very nice it was too. Uh, back on this little project and next thing is gonna be our bag anti-slip device. So basically I want you to pick this up and but to stop the bag from sliding down the forks. So I think the easiest thing is gonna be <coughs> well this. So there to there about there. I'll stick that in the vice. Do it. Ah, there he is. That's what I'm looking for. Hasp. I actually found this lying in the road some years ago. So if you're in the Gloucester area and some years ago you lost a hasp, there's a reasonable chance I've got it. If you're bringing a receipt and proof of purchase, you can have it back. About there, I reckon. Well, the idea was good, but I think the wood's a bit dry. Mm. Let's try something a bit sharper. See what it's like. A bit more. Not a lot. Oh, I don't know. That might be a case of hammering that tight in there. And then lashing it down will actually stiffen that on there too, won't it? He's on there. Okay. Let's secure you on there, shall we? So, a bit of Heath Robinson baler string work. But literally all I want to do, where's that tail, is make sure that stays on there tight and doesn't slip. There you go. Now we're tight. Okay. Should we have a trial lift? Uh, which is the cheapest bag? If I break it. None of them, really. They were the heaviest, though, weren't they? We'll pick up one of those. I say heaviest. They're all supposed to weigh 600 kilos. But yeah, he definitely did feel heavier on that one.
reckon that works. But they reckon it works quite well. So that only needs to be said, thank you for everybody who suggested that I do this. Um, I ummed and ad whether it was a good idea because I did have to make a little bit of an adjustment to the bottom plate to enable me to do this. These forks are made so you can't put them on upside down without cutting a bit of metal. They're obviously not designed or made to do this, but these are, I think they're two ton uh, forks. So they're capable of two tons and there's two of them. Um, so although they're upside down, these bags weigh 600 kilos. So to be honest, they should be still well within um, limits of what they can and can't do. So, and at the end of the day, I have to find the safest way I can of getting these bags off. It may not be the best way, but it'll be the safest way I have at my disposal with the equipment that I have so this machine is rated to 590 kilos. So actually one of those bags is 10 kilos over. It's rated weight. But um, yeah, I reckon that works. We'll find out later on. <laughs>